it looks like it must have been uh, relatively re recently, geologically speaking. And knowing what you do about the family that was here, it looks like this place was constructed as a dark shrine or cathedral or something to some horrible dark power. The stones of the place, most of them are natural to the area. They've just carved out this vast uh, complex under their land. But the tiles that you're walking on that fit into the stone floor uh, are a strange mottled collection of colors that aren't natural to the area. These came from somewhere else. It was built by the family within the past hundred years or so. Yep. And, and why it, I, human sacrifice, if Tom had anything, if he was telling the truth? Um, do I think it was like dwarven or human construction? Do I, can I get any idea of that? Probably both. Okay. Hey, uh, Seeger, can you lift him up to the ceiling and then he can walk across it? Uh-huh, he absolutely can do that. <laughs> I'm sorry, did we come off initiative? Yes, we did. That's even in the spell description, specifically, that he can do All that. Right. And then once he gets a chance to be over the ground, could you lower him? Yep. So from the ceiling, uh, these four side rooms here mm -hmm. have archways going into the hallway. So you have to come down a good 10 or 15 feet along the wall. Whereas the north and south, or the cardinal entrances, I guess are much taller, and he's able to reach those kind of from the ceiling. The room okay. itself, this is, looking up, makes kind of a dome shape, about 30 feet at its highest point, which is above the center of the clay pit. Can we Lucius? tell which direction that sound is coming from? It's echoing from all directions. Uh, uh, Lucius have... steps into the uh, into the hallway here, and uh, looks at the others and says, I think we can hazard lighting a torch, I don't see anything... Of, uh, hostile right now, although that don't like the look of that pit. Lucius is going to light a torch, and he's going to get a better look at the uh, at the double doors with the light. Okay, and yeah, these oak doors look like they withstood hell from a battering ram, but stood fast. Uh, you see from the inside large uh, holes on the front where at one point the uh, the handles were affixed to the door. These have been removed, so it's just. The wooden doors themselves, they're closed, and you're not sure if they're barred from the other side or not. Do you want to, do we want to hazard a try? Try the yeah. door? Take a step back. All right. Scrappy, do your job. Do your best, buddy. So he falls out under you again. Seeger's got you. <laughs> so he's, what? what's the state of Scrappy right now? What the hell's going on? Uh, he's, he's trying on to the ground. Him. Okay. Yeah, but I'm maintaining the levitation, concentration. But he's, yeah, he could concentrate. Seeker could concentrate to raise or lower him. Okay, so right. you've lowered him to the ground. So he can move on the ground normally? Yep. Okay. And yeah, he puts his strength to the door. And it'll push inward, but there is something on the other side blocking that motion. Mm -hmm. Does he have to make a strength check? or? If he wants to open it, he'll have to succeed on a strength check. Let's go Can, ahead and give that a shot. Do you mind if I assist? I think after what happened with the floor, I think it's probably safe to have Scrappy give this a try before we do. That's a 22 on strength. 22, yeah. With that, you hear a, uh, a grinding sound on the other side. Is whatever was placed is moved aside when Scrappy crashes into the door. And it opens into a larger rectangular room about 30 feet by 20 feet and in the floor in the center here carved into the tiles uh is some kind of magic sigil the tiles you're walking on are made of stone and they're relatively smooth but in this room the tiles fit together inside of this uh sigil that's been carved into the floor and someone has gone to town on these tiles it looks like somebody has taken a great hammer and just crashed at them and broken them up so the whole center of this room it's like shards of sharp rock and what the actual sigil was the shape of it or what it was originally meant to look like is indiscernible uh it's not that i don't anything. trust your competence gus but I can hammer 
I can hammer a, a spear point out of Scrappy's leg pretty easily. I can't do that to your leg. Can I? Actually, um... I'm pretty sure you can. Go, go ahead. It's <laughs> fine. Can I? Can I maybe you? Could I maybe use my vast knowledge of magic, lore, and such to possibly glean some kind of information based on the pattern of the uh, tiling on the floor? Yeah, it's impossible to tell up? what the shape was, but Lucius, go ahead and make a, an Arcana check. Seeker would not be appropriate for you to help on him on this. Huh. Interesting. You just warlock shit. Oh fuck me. No, I mean um, I'm trained in Arcana. I know things. That's a five. A five? Do I want it? Do I want to waste the blips on attempting this again? Maybe. How interested uh, are you in the answer? Pretty interested, actually. So yeah. Maybe one of the options would be we take these tiles and we put them back together so you get a better look at it. Yeah. That Good looks point. like it might be possible, but it would be a very long undertaking. There's thousands of these little broken tile pieces that would have to be reassembled. Yeah, I'm not gonna. I, I, I really want to know, but at the same time, I. Just... Well, you know, let's put it this way. We know the people were de devil worshippers. We know that this place looks like it withstood some kind of battle. I'm guessing it's a protective spell that didn't work. But perhaps it might give us some more insight into what what happened here. Inside of this room, two blips. Over here is a stone door, and to the south also is a stone door. You're burning two we blips. Can... We're we can figure that out after. Oh, I don't think I refilled your blips. Oh, yes, I did. Never mind. I know what I'm doing. I was looking at the wrong column in the spreadsheet. I'm very confident. So, Lucius, you are spending two blips? Yep. Okay. And how'd you do on your reroll? That is a 14. A 14. You're very familiar with devils, lawful fiends, like Mephistopheles. Mm -hmm. uh, there's their iconography, uh, some of their mannerisms, kind of how they do business... They have a counterpart, demons, the chaotic fiends. You can't be certain, because you don't, don't know a lot about demons in particular. But looking at the coloration of this place, and your, you, just the stories you may have heard about this family in the past, you think they were demon worshippers, not devil worshippers. Mm -hmm. The and reason... Lucius will correct, will correct Seeker on that. Lucius takes great pleasure in correcting Seeker at every opportunity. They're the cold iron ones, right? Uh, Out of character, McDole doesn't know that. <laughs> the reason that gives you pause is because you probably know more about demons than the rest of the group, simply because you've had dealings with devils personally. The difference between a demon and a devil is a devil is willing to work with you and can be negotiated with. A demon will eat part of you, rape part of you, and kill the rest of you. And if you're lucky, they might do it in an order more conducive to your pleasure. Demons so, can't be reasoned with, and all they live for is to destroy. Alex? So I'm going to go to the standard operating procedure of hammering a nail into Scrappy's back and infusing it with light. Okay. And I'll send Scrappy into the room. Sending Scrappy into the room. Strewn about the room are body part or uh, remains. These don't look. I mean, they're skeletal remains at this point, uh, but they're covered in shredded cloth, bits of battered and useless armor. You see some weapons strewn about, and you do indeed in the center of the room find essentially a suit of plate armor, kind of sitting there with the skeletonized remains, uh, a much smaller. Humanoid, looking at the make of the armor, you take it probably to be a dwarf. Laying in front of him, a warhammer. Two-handed warhammer that might have been used to break up this floor. And then he Somebody died from the that. Let's uh, see if he can't, Scrappy can't open this door. Okay. And he can indeed. In opening this room... <gasps> As you open the door and the light pours in, uh, you see Tony Hawk perched on the edge of this basin, and Tom Wolf is sitting in the basin of water. Let me go ahead and 
load him in. Make him pink, why not? Uh, he's currently unconscious. You see the empty water skin is laying on the edge of the basin next to him. And he's kind of just, his head is kind of just lumped forward. And he's breathing raggedly. You can see where he's been badly beaten about the face and neck. And part of his leg is twisted under part of the stone from the fountain above when it was demolished. I have a potion of healing. Do you think we want to use that on him? I mean, I could cast a heal spell, but let's let Gus do his medicine thing. Yeah. Four. Uh, what Same. is we have that on the table? What's uh, Gus kind of rushes in the room like? What is holding? What's he's pinned down, right? He's pinned down under a big broken chunk of the fountain above. Must have had some kind of statue or decoration standing above it, mm -hmm. and that's been thrown down here, and it's pinned under his uh, pinned over his leg. If you were to move this, you'd be able to carry him out. Okay. Uh. What are the chances of me of me and Scrappy working together to move this without hurting him further? Without damaging him, you could probably do it. Without hurting him, very unlikely. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I meant, yeah, like no pain, no gain. Suck it up, Buttercup. But like, listen, <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to kill him by accident. <laughs> I'll remember that next time I've got fifty people shooting longbows at you. <laughs> That's why I was suggesting the potion of healing. Yo, you want to get Scrappy wedged under that thing? I can lift him up with 500 pounds of force. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually a really good idea. So yeah. Use Scrappy as a jack. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and yeah, just the jaws of life up in here. The pain of the pressure being relieved off of his leg is enough to shock Tom awake, and he cries out as it happens and looks up. And for a moment, he doesn't recognize that it's you, and he tries to scramble backwards, which causes his leg to cry out in pain. Even more. But after a second or two, he calms down. Uh, Gus grabs him under the shoulders and mm -hmm. pulls him up out of the thing and just sets him here. And he's sopping <laughs> wet below his waist. And this water is absolutely disgusting. And make a medicine check. All right. He's a ghost. It is a... I think that's an 11. 13. Let me double check. No, it is a 12. A 12. Something's wrong with Tom. Both of his legs look much skinnier than they did last time you saw him. One of them is badly twisted and broken, and when you hoist him up by the shoulders, he cries out. You're really not supposed to do that to someone with a broken leg. What the hell is wrong with you? You're trained in medicine. You should know better. But well, something is very <laughs> wrong with Tom from the torso down where he was submerged in this pool. Hmm. And you've got a source of light in here because Scrappy's standing here. Yeah. Can yeah. I move over closer to the water and make an arcana check on it? Yeah, go ahead and do that. Well, uh, Lucius also. Can I assist in that? <clears throat> Let, let's seek her make it first. Uh, Gus, while you're talking, while you're getting Tom situated, even his hands that you're looking at, his hands look wrinkled and i don't mean wrinkled because he's been in this water i mean wrinkled with age seeker what was that check that was a 27 so me and lucius walk over and we're just like chatting it out yeah, yeah. this is some magic ass water and it's uh malevolent magic you're gonna have to use an identify spell to figure out exactly what it is but it's definitely not safe to drink and it's definitely not safe to sit in for multiple days if you pass me that uh, that pearl, I wouldn't mind yep. spending the... And I'll fish the by. pearl out of my pack. Take the ten Scrappy, minutes don't, do that. don't. Stay away from that. Florian, what are you doing out there? Chilling. Chilling. I think actually... Florian, make me like... a perception check. Perception check. There we go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that is a 12. 12. So, your companions nine. have gone into the room. A 9. And have helped Tom up. And you out here, kind of holding down the fort, you haven't heard anything. Okay. We have expectations and you are not meeting them. Uh, yeah, I'm... Because I'm going to be concentrating, I'm going to set uh, Tony on watch on the door, and I'm going to cast Identify, but not as a ritual, because I think we only have about a minute. Okay. So I'm going to 
I'm going to just burn the first level slot. It's ex very evil magic water. And it's a form of malevolent torture. The idea is you can torture somebody by submerging them in this water. The parts of their body that are submerged in it age very rapidly. A year or so for every couple of hours they're submerged. And parts of your body aging at different rates creates great pain and discomfort. The kind of depraved mind that would use this for a prolonged period of time on an actual person completely baffles you. Go ahead and make me a charisma saving throw. You got it. That is a 12. A 12? I don't have the Wait, is this one. against magic or a spell? It is against magic! You're a gnome, buddy. That is a 20. A 20. The level of evil we're talking about here. We're not just talking about, like, ah, oh, Lucius is a warlock and he's friends with a demon or whatever. You don't really know the specifics. We're not talking about, uh, like, ah, oh, somebody planned to murder that guy in the street by knifing him. We're talking about a primal and otherworldly evil that as you let it just partially seep into your mind through this identify spell, you can't comprehend the vastness of it. And as soon as you have an understanding of what this water is, you close yourself off to it. And there's no have... ill effects, but it terrifies you. I have two questions. Yeah. First one, when you said it ages things, would that only work on a creature? Or would that was work on an object? Only creatures. It's specifically meant to torture mortals. Alright, that doesn't seem super useful to me. <laughs> uh, and second question, just because I want to know the answer, and I'm curious. It's yeah. the secret we're talking about. Uh, is it the water itself that's magical, or is it the basin? Like, no, it's, could it's, I put some of this water in a flask and take it? It's the water. You could take some with you, but you have to be very careful while doing it. Just Yeah, I'm going to take some. Like... Just dipping your fingers in for a few seconds to, like, sweep a flask down there is probably safe, providing you wash thoroughly afterwards. But the idea is, and now that you actually have a light source in here, you can see in the basin itself and on the walls behind you are places where shackles can be affixed. Oh, jeez, no, thank you. Yeah, that's awful, and I don't even want to touch it for a couple seconds, so I'm just tying a piece of rope around an open flask and dunking it in, okay. and then shutting it stoppered shut. Yeah, you can fill a flask of this water and put, bringing it out of the basin into the light it looks fetid and it has a distinct odor to it it's definitely water but it's like stagnant horrible greenish brown brackish just like flies with mosquitoes would swarm to this not good stuff Lucius what takes a sample for himself as well okay Have you shared this experience with the rest of us oh absolutely us? okay then yeah in that case florian looks at Tom and says, did the flying pig demon put you here? Well, the flying pig is a devil. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. there is Tom a has a very far away look in his eyes now that Seekers described what this water does. Tom is looking very, very scared right now. And it started like the injuries are starting to set in. His hands and upper arms and then everything from the torso down. Have, his hands are a little better off because they haven't been submerged the whole time. Uh, he tells you that he knew of this site. He's never been down into this complex before, but he's used this site as a drop point in the past. His plan was to come up here, put down the cache of goods, tell you guys where it is via the Sending Stone, and be far away by the time you got here. Good plan. However, the ogres and the bugbears had been camping nearby. Uh, he wasn't expecting them. They attacked him. He tried to appease them by telling them what some of the magic items he brought did. When he described the Sending Stone as a magic talking stone, and the ogre couldn't immediately get it to talk, they punished him by throwing him down the well. And then a day, level, day later, when they couldn't make sense of it when it finally did talk, they threw the stone down on top of him and then tried to collapse the well in Oops. on him. I'm sorry. 
I grabbed the wrong thing by being an axe. Good job, Nodal. I'm sorry. So that's the story of how he ended up here. He asks you whether or not the cache is still there. Do you know? What cache? He says it, the cache of magic items he was going to Yeah, but like, where was it supposed to be? He never told us. Yeah, he had yeah, the other ogre yeah. must have made, made off with it. The other question he asks is... Where did is, you leave it? He describes the area of the the encampment where they had their stuff set up. Uh, they were going through some of it, the alchemical goods and the sending stone and everything else. He was trying to buy his way out of the situation by giving them the items. Mm. The other question is asked is whether or not Win is safe. Wynn? We don't know who that is. He says that Win is the uh, the seer that lives in a wagon nearby. We didn't see her, so probably. But we can check on her when we get out of here. Yes. Florian's flaw that he believes everything that Tom is saying. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wow, that's that's incredible luck that you managed to fall down into the poisonous contaminous well that just happens to be right there. That's crazy. And he chuckles as much as in as much as he can. He says On the contrary, I consider it to be terrible luck indeed. Maybe uh maybe some an, a, a sufficiently powerful priest can reverse the negative effects of this. Yeah, I brought back a sample so they can check it out, see if it's some sort of curse. Maybe like I don't know, greater restoration. I think that's like what it's What's next? Um, I say we we Get bring Tom out of here. Go check on the seer. Yep. And after that, we go get back our magic shit. What is this pink square? So I, I unveiled part of the map and I felt guilty about it, so I hit it back up. <laughs> so you That's just drew, drew more attention to it. <laughs> What's funny is, like, the obstruction you drew actually floats above the map. Yeah, it's kind <laughs> of oh, come yeah. on. Yeah. I did my <laughs> best. Reveal. You did your best, Nodal. <laughs> You're a good man, sir. What's next? I think we get him out of here so we can uh, go check up on uh, Win. Okay. Well, right now you're standing in this room. Gus, you're you're actually carrying him, right? Right. right. I am carrying him in a gentle f fireman's carry. Okay. So I am not going first this time. Alex, Alex, Alex and being Alex. the first one back out into the room, make a perception check. Can Scrappy make a perception check? Um, no. Okay, that's a eight. An eight. All right, you don't hear anything. See how much of this is like Brickard actually having something out there ready to ambush us, and how much of this is just him trying to increase paranoia. The first perception check was like a six, and then the second one was like an eight. So you tell me exactly man. paranoia. So we're what good. is what is Tom's passive perception? Alex. Yep. As you come around here. Okay. Roll initiative. You got it, boss. Don't put Scrappy in the sand again, because I don't got more of those levitates. <laughs> Ready to roll my one for initiative. I didn't. I didn't roll a one. I don't have to move. <laughs> That's always the best. I just don't like rolling ones. It just makes me feel bad. I love rolling ones. I hate rolling ones. A one is a gateway into infinity. Oh, I beat everybody on initiative again. I just, let's listen. Fun for the Wild, we played for like two years, and I couldn't beat anybody on initiative. So this is a very new experience well, it's because for we me. had Birdie. <laughs> Birdie had like a jil plus jillion to initiative. It was plus ten. Not a jillion. Plus ten. Jillion. A jillion. I beat Might Birdie like two times. Give me some credit. <laughs> yeah, you had a monk and two rogues, so. Yeah, I mean that's fair. You're, it's really hard to beat that on initiative. Uh, Scrappy cannot be surprised, correct? Correct. Okay. 
why he's the scout. I just need to put Wait, a whole bunch of these. Wait, who threw me into the front? <laughs> put a bunch of these in a pile. I guess I don't need to. I'm just going to cut paste anyway. But I like doing that for dramatic effect. Be well, it would be nice if we could actually see them. Oh, they're over there. Alex! Mm -hmm. Around the corner. One of them perched on the floor. Another one perched on the wall, just holding onto it like a lizard would. And a third behind him on the ceiling, maybe ten feet up off the ground. As though they were waiting in perfect silence, lunge forward at Scrappy as soon as he appears around the corner. These are humanoid creatures with grayish black, like charcoal covered, colored skin. Mm -hmm. Wearing nothing. Uh, grabbing into the floor uh, with claws. It looks like their knees and their elbows are jointed in the opposite direction. Their heads are all completely bald, smooth balds, and their ears come off at a point and curl forward. And then the back of their head and the sides have this shaggy, dusty, just mottled black colored hair. And the thing about their faces is most of their faith is, is teeth, uh, their teeth filled maw that when they open up to cry out, uh, just leaves this huge hole, and you notice they don't have eyes at all. Just this mouth gives way to a couple of nostrils, and then above that, this pate of a head, and all three of them descend onto Scrappy, being the first living question mark thing. Living is a state of mind. Is it? I'm a gnome. So. <laughs> All right, I'm trying to hit Scrappy, and I'm not going to be able to do it with these rolls. I have, sir, a 16. That hits. Okay, a 10. Nope. And a 7. Nope. Seven points of okay. bludgeoning damage as they all descend onto Scrappy, banging on him with their fists, with their legs, trying to bring him down, but only one actually manages to land a blow. And as these things scream, you hear the echoes of similar screams coming from down the other hallways and oh from the pit in the center. Ooh. Oh, boy. And that's going to bring us to Lucius is surprised. Seeker is surprised. Florian is surprised. Alex is surprised. Scrappy is never surprised. Uh, I can't do anything, so he takes the dog action. Okay, and then back to Gus, who is surprised. God, terrible. So now I get to attack Scrappy again, but now he's dodging. Um, actually, one of them would see Lucius now. So let's put two on Scrappy, one on Lucius. Not Lucius, Alex. You mean Alexander? Right. Yeah. Scrappy's got... deflecting uh... attack on the one attacking me, though. Okay, so I've got a six to hit Scrappy. Nope. I have a 13 to hit Scrappy. Nope. And then this one is deflecting his attack. You're not dodging. I have a 13 to hit you. Nope. And then he can use his reaction to do what to my the, that, four monsters? The reaction was the deflect attack. It gives him disadvantage on the attack on me. Oh, okay. So, I mean, he didn't hit anyone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> However, you hear more of these creatures approaching, skittering along walls and floors from this direction and starting to peer around there as well. Problem. That's the end of their movement. That brings us to Lucius. I'm going to take a step up here. I'm going to take aim at this guy and blast him with an Eldritch Blast. Do it! I will do it as best I can. That's probably going to hit. That's a 24 to hit? 24 does hit. 23. 23, I'm sorry. 23 also hits. Hey, that's 13 force damage. And you blast him backwards and smash him against the wall. And his shaved head cracks, and the thing stops screaming and falls to the ground dead. Love to see it. Yeah, I don't like this. Lucius steps back yeah. to fall back. here. Get back behind those doors. Yep, I'm going to do that. It's going to bring okay. us to Seeker. All right, Seeker is going to 
set loose with the spe Seeker special. That's right, everyone. <laughs> it's Seeker's Sleep. <laughs> Targeting these guys, the five surrounding Scrappy. Okay. God, I hate that that doesn't work anymore, and I don't know why. One second. What? This? Yeah, why? It's got to be, like, my tabletop stand. You got a virus. Got a it's virus. A very specific and virus. And the <laughs> only cure is more sleep. <laughs> it's 21 hit points worth of sleep. 21? Which guys you were targeting? The five surrounding, uh, like, starting near, uh... Are scrappy here and moving outward. Which one of them would you like to fall asleep? Uh, let's call it this one, the one that's directly adjacent to Alexander. Sure. He falls to the ground, snoring, and the snoring somehow still sounds like the high pitched scream somehow, which is terrifying. Moving or staying that's put? That's the worst. I'm going to move backwards. Guys, they've got between 10 and 21 hit points. <laughs> <laughs> that's going to bring us to Florian. <laughs> Actually, no. I'm moving over to this side of the room. That one has a door in it. <laughs> Fair point. Fair point. Do I have line of sight if I'm here? Um... If you can... It looks like you do, probably to this guy and this guy, but I'll give you line of sight to anyone you can draw a straight line without clipping this wall. You're not in any danger of clipping Alex. That would be hilarious. Well, I'm just so you can see the corner clearly. Using so many magic missiles that Alex's hat just go flying <laughs> off. Um. Well, I took one out in 13 hit points, so. They've got between 11 and 13. <laughs> Nailing it down. <laughs> Early, we're chasing ACs, now we're chasing hit point um, totals. Yeah, yeah. let's um, two and one. Okay. Magic missiles. Yes, please. Ding dong. All right, that is not bad. Six and four. Okay. And you blast each of them with a magic missile. Um, one of them, this far, the one you did six damage to, is now bloodied. Now, what does bloodied look like for these creatures? <laughs> They're humanoids, so <laughs> bleeding profusely at the point where the missile has bruised and badly in the chest. Okay. All right, fine. <laughs> Trying to be cute. These are organic creatures. They have to breathe and sleep and all the good stuff. I they, am good right here. This they, one's really got to sleep. Very wall. They probably have sex at some point. You don't want to see that at all. I know. No, thank you. I, I really do. <laughs> I, I, I want to know these like, mating habits. He's like, I got this on DVD. I got that on DVD. Uh, Alex, you're up. Gonna take a shot at that one with my crossbow. Okay. You. Rolled yeah. them right in the middle of the guys there. <laughs> Taking them all out. It's an armor class of 23. That hits. It's five for seven damage. And that's enough. That one is down. You're back Bonus in action, the room. order your Scrappy to disengage. Okay. You get everybody in the uh, back. Now the door that Scrappy pushed open, there was debris on the floor that he had to kind of slide out of the way. I think I think we want to hold right there. With Scrappy, Only two of them can come at us at once. Yeah. Is that the plan? Yeah. With Scrappy outside the room. Well, I don't think we want to close the door. I think we want to use the the hallway as a natural choke point. Okay. Yeah, that sounds that sounds fair. Gus. Yep. I'm going to very gingerly place uh, him on the ground. Okay. And give him a little pat on the head and say, "You stay here." And I'm going to <laughs> stand here, and I'm going to hold an action to attack. The first one of the creatures that gets within melee range with my hammer. All right, that's gonna be quite a few of them. Uh, not this one. This one's asleep. Uh, this one is injured, and they've got a speed of thirty. <laughs> All 
All right, let's see. I'm picturing it like the uh, orcs in uh, Oh, Cosm that's Doom. not going to hit. Lord of the Rings. <laughs> or not the orcs, goblins. They're the same thing. So yeah, this guy steps into your threat range. Does a nine hit him? No. Okay, then no, it doesn't work. Gus, here's the problem. Like I said earlier, they're come, they're in a room with like a 30 foot tall dome. And the openings at the cardinal directions go all the way up to the ceiling. That means there is plenty of space for these guys to climb right over you and launch through the doorway over your head. Gross. Uh, mm. So you've used your reaction on him. This one's going to leave Scrappy's threat range. Uh, yeah, that's going to get an attack. Okay. I'm not happy right now. See, you feel so good back here. That's it's a uh, 15. 15 does hit. For nine force damage. All right, it is bloodied. As this one climbs over Scrappy's head and lunges, throws itself, like grabs the corner of the door and launches into the room at Lucius. That's okay, I took some temporary hit points from that other guy. Cool, that's going to be a 20 to hit. Yep, that's it. For... <laughs> Okay, I see what I did wrong here. I'm sorry. Five points of bludgeoning damage. Ow. This guy flings himself over Gus's head at Alexander. Hang on, time out. Yeah. Before you do that, uh, reaction, Hellish Rebuke. Yeah, rebuke him. Uh, please to be making a dexterity saving throw. DC is 15. 19. Uh, he still takes half damage. Okay, that's probably going to kill him. <laughs> so half of 2d10. Fire damage. <gasps> Fifteen, so uh, seven. Seven fire damage. Seven, yeah, that's enough. Hey! Burn him to death. Nice. See, Journey, you could have all this and more. <laughs> uh, you can get that one for free. Don't even need to be a warlock. They don't have enough movement to get through. This guy's going to come over I'll here. I'll take my seven temporary hit points back. Okay. Did the one that jumped onto me, did you miss attacking because of the interruption? Oh, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't roll to attack you. My apologies, but... Oh, that's a natural 20. Again? Again? <laughs> <laughs> 10 points of bludgeoning damage. Yep. Did you rest during the short rest? Yeah, otherwise I'd be dead. Gus, okay. you hear okay. and you can see more of the creatures poking their heads in from the hallways off to the sides mm. and one back here now and you hear more and more of them behind in the hallways and you hear the echoing sounds of their cries in the now newly opened hole in the center of this pit also one can attack Scrappy and one can attack you mm -hmm. uh, Scrappy I have a 21 to hit Yep. for 9 points of bludgeoning damage Gus, I have an eight. Uh, let me let me double check that. Yeah, that doesn't. <laughs> and they're just trying to crash down on you with their fists. Like they're just trying to beat on you, just inexpertly. There's no skill or training or even really intelligence behind their attacks. They're just a terrible swarm of creatures. That's all of them for now. We're gonna come back to Lucius. <laughs> Lucius takes out his uh, takes out the. The book that he's been carrying around that nobody really knows where it came from uh looks to like pull some magical energy out of it and it takes the form of a chain like spiky whip which is really scary gross uh this casting thorn whip at the guy that is on uh alexander okay is that an attack roll or a saving throw that is an attack roll okay Nelly spell attack that's a 17 to hit that hits That's two, two piercing damage. Okay. So you damaged him, but he's not bloodied yet. Yeah, Lucius is gonna slide back to the back, uh, back up closer to the door. Do we want a uh, quick, uh, quick detail note? Uh, how is this? How is this door situated? Would they be able to pull the same trick of climbing around the walls and weirdness? This door is much narrower and much smaller. Okay, so I feel that that's a better choke point now. So that's where Lucius is going. Okay, it's gonna bring us to Seeker. 
All right. Has this guy taken any damage yet? Yeah, he just took two points. I just, yeah, I just dealt two points of damage to him. All right. I think I'm going to use my last spell slot on trying to get us out of this room. Okay. Uh, so, Florian, are you willing to, to drag our wounded friend through that door? You bet, buddy. I'm going to toss out a sleep. It'll be targeting these four right in front of us, mm -hmm. starting with the ones who have taken the most damage. I don't think these ones here have taken any damage yet up in the doorway. That's the dream. Okay. 24 hit points worth. 24. He's asleep. Uh, let me do math. 22 left? Or, I don't know. No. Yeah, no, I, I, I did that bad. I'm sorry. And which one of these three guys do you want? This one. And he's asleep. All right, and I'm booking my way through the door. Okay. It's going to bring us to Florian. And yeah, I'm going to grab what's his butt. Okay. And drag him probably really painfully into the room. And you have enough movement Guys, to do that? There... Yes. Guys, there's no way out of that room. Let's get the doors closed. Yes, and try there is. Here. Okay. <laughs> Seeker insists there is. Six. Okay, so you're grabbing him and dashing? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, you get him safely into this room. Uh, Alex. Ugh. Okay. Let's shoot this one. Okay. Get started with that. That'll a 26 on armor class. That hits. For, uh, 12 magical piercing damage. Shooting him with what? Uh, the magical crossbow. And you slaughter him outright. He takes that magical crossbow to what would be his eye if he had any eyes. And he cries out in pain as his neck snaps backwards. He falls over onto his back and wriggles around no more. But then you run back into the room with no possible escape. <laughs> I'm trusting Seeker on this one. Gus! Uh, well, oh, I got I'm sorry. Sc stuff. Scrappy, go. We should probably put Scrappy on the initiative order. So he's always on my turn initiative. He's on. He's right after you, but I never. I oh. when I glance at it, I don't. I, I prefer to actually just see him there. When I make a tile for him, I'll make sure yeah. to prioritize that this week. Feel it's... free to coup de gras that guy on the way out, Gus. Yeah. Now it's Gus's turn. Uh, actually, can I have Scrappy drag Lucius through the door? Yeah, he hadn't used uh, as long as Lucius doesn't want to. Yeah, he has to use his action to grapple Lucius. As long Gus, as Lucius... just get in here and close the door before they get another chance. Five, ten, fifteen. I'm going to hit this guy. <laughs> it's not That's a... a natural twenty. I mean, it's it, he's unconscious. It's a crit anyway. What are you doing to him? Already a crit. <laughs> can I get like like can I get like double quit crit? No, there's no such thing. What's wrong with you? That is 15 points of damage. Yeah, you got him. Good. <laughs> and I'm going to run over here and slam this door shut. And, and as you it. slam the door shut, you see dozens and dozens of arms reaching up over the top of the lip as these creatures crawling and swarming up. And the last thing you see through the door is the mass of them just pressing forward. And you've only managed to kind of dull the cries. And now you're in the room it's with no exit. Worst. So this would be a good place to uh, to break for the week. <laughs> and when we come back, we'll see if Seeker really does have a master plan of getting out of this room. Yeah, I'm excited for this plan that works. I have two yeah. plans. Don't say them. Don't tell. Yeah, don't tell us. You we, have to yeah, say no. <laughs> well, you need well, to wait, write those down so you don't forget. One of them is we're sitting on, but you guys want to hear the second, the the first part of the plan. <laughs> The right. first part of the plan is that it, those were the only words I could say that would get him to come into this room. <laughs> <laughs> I have, I have interacted with his overconfidence in the past. 
right. So I'm going to go set up a straw poll. I'm going to go dark for a few seconds while I add up some experience so you guys can talk about where you would like to award your blips. Also, be thinking about your own blips for the week. And I'll be back in just a couple minutes. All right, it was the most creative today. Mm. I thought that familiar shit was real smart. Oh, that yeah. was good, actually. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was... Well, which familiar shit? The one Making where... him disappear and then reappear 30 feet down. Oh, I was actually going yeah. to... For the... For the doing the scare, uh, getting the ogre to go the other way. Oh, yeah, there was, was a lot of familiar stuff way. going on. <laughs> so, All right, so who was the... Go to... Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so who furthered the party's goals today? Uh, let me see. Uh, okay. My personal vote is for Alexander because... I didn't fall into this trap because Scrappy did it for me. <laughs> Literally fell into the trap. Yep. Okay. All right, then. Who was a badass today? I mean, I feel like Gus just walked up there and then said no to all of Burke's attack rolls. That was extremely good, yeah. And then intangible. That 24 as well. I'm real happy with it. As yeah, someone who really delights good. in having a too high AC to make Brick angry. <laughs> uh, I'm going to give it to Lucius for uh, <laughs> his de-escalation plan having the exact opposite effect. I'm good with that. It's really hurting my 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 self esteem, guys. It happens. It happens. Don't worry. It it's hurts. Dungeons and Dragons. I rolled two ones, <laughs> and then I tried to do something else, and I rolled another one. Yeah, it's yeah. It's D and D. Things just man. happen. You got to roll I with had, the punches. I had my own party trap me in a room with no exits when I wanted to go in the room with exits. There were like a thousand little guys in there. We could have closed these doors. No, we couldn't have. They were. Uh, well, these doors were broken. D and D is all about. My understanding with that was that those doors were broken. And we couldn't close them. If I'm wrong about that, my bad. We yeah, took that, effort that... to open them in the first place. I think if we were able to close them, they would have held them back. But they were also damaged. I'd like yeah. to point out. So they might not have held forever, but they would have not I, left my... us in here. So it's okay. Yeah, that was my that was my thinking. Don't worry, that worked, Seeker. That absolutely worked. Yeah. So for intangibles, I got Lucius for trying to de-escalate. Yeah. yeah. In like, fact, re-escalating. And in fact, re-escalating, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Don't feel bad. I tried to do a thing in the last campaign, and I got a bunch of children killed. I've never made it made a decision that got a lot of people killed. <laughs> <laughs> Not even once. Alien was all about making decisions and making poor decisions. Here's my point, though, right? Is if we're going to give people a bunch of shit for murdering someone, I can't murder someone who's already dead because they've already been murdered. <laughs> that's just that's just physics. I mean, you could if you take the uh, animate dead spell. You're a wizard. That's true. Remember when? No, I'm taking clone. All right. Who Alien wants some experience? A bunch of <laughs> oh, that was fun. <laughs> I, I enjoyed that. <laughs> for <clears throat> for five bugbears and an ogre, and some number of these gray bastards. Trash buddy. Three hundred and forty experience apiece. I give you credit for the ogre, even though you didn't kill him, because you got him down to single-digit HP, and then he failed his morale check. So he was going to run the fuck away whether or not you guys did anything else. That's fair. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, 340 experience apiece. <clears throat> Excuse me. 340, you said? Yes. Oh. I'm going to award everybody one blip for their role in... Rescuing Tom. I mean, technically, yeah, you haven't all the way rescued him yet. No. 
We're getting there. But I think you guys got him on the ropes. We have re-skewed him. <laughs> we do have Tom on the ropes, yes. <laughs> what pushed me overboard on awarding whether or not to award you guys a blip guys a blip on doing something that was just what the adventure was anyway was you guys went back and put in effort to feed him and send him down uh -huh. food and water there was a moment i'm like they're not gonna even do that much are they they're just gonna barrel into this dungeon and then check out all the side paths looking for treasure first no, oh, we're checking the side paths for treasure once we deal with the giblets in the middle the we can handle that is that what we're calling we're them? Giblet. Well, yeah, giblet. Giblet. Giblets now. One, one of you yeah. wizards leveled up and learned fireball already, right? <laughs> Let's I, see I, how many blips I get. I would. I, I. I hate that neither one of our wizards has any AOE whatsoever. I cast sleep every single round. <laughs> AOE damage. <laughs> AOE damage. <laughs> oh. I mean, like cone of. Uh, what was it? Uh, to be. Hands. To be clear. Hands. Magic missiles not area of effect. It is multi-target. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Sleep, yeah. however, is area of effect. But it doesn't but deal it does damage. It. Right. Well, but but both magic missile and sleep deal fixed damage. An AOE effect would deal as much damage as you can fit guys under it. <laughs> hey, I was very clear. I was not that kind of wizard. I know. I am so excited to get that spell that gives like things mouths now. I, I can't <laughs> wait to cast that. I am going to pick up. Every it, you, you guys are going to have at least every first level evocation spell because I'm going to make sure that you have it in your spell book. <laughs> you guys, sorry, but you give me sorry, any but... kind of shit, I'm going to slap this door and have it come up with a magic mouth that just says "fuck y'all." <laughs> <laughs> who Fuck wants to who wants to make their case first for blips? I'll go. Seeker. All right, I've got chaotic good. Good is only taking from those that can afford it. Chaos is taking them for all that's wor they're worth. For not asking for any reward when we found the wagon uh, driver stuck in the mud. Until we found out he was a smuggler and then trying to figure out the angle of how we take advantage of that. <laughs> so you're, you're convinced he's a smuggler? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I've got anybody can be fooled except for me for deciding to f trick the ogre and in doing so getting him to chase after me into the woods. <laughs> uh, and then I've got... Opportunity is everywhere, if you can see it, for rescuing a wagon, searching for dragon powder smugglers, putting bugbears to sleep, fooling an ogre, catching a dog, surveilling a cage in the room, all without casting a single damage spell. <laughs> <laughs> and eating, what did we decide, 24 pizza rolls? 24 pizza rolls. 24 pizza rolls. 24 pizza rolls. But I did some damage to those 24 pizza rolls. <laughs> was, it AO, was it AOE damage, though? No, no, it was single target. Who's next? That's ridiculous. 24 Florian instances Dale. of single target damage. Uh, Alright. So Florian's Flaw, which I realized as I was making note of it, is an incredible flaw for a detective to have. Yeah, you don't There's say. There's always an explanation, and we must always consider it. For believing Tom Wolf's story unerringly. <laughs> yeah, he just happened to place these things here, and the ogre just happened to come by, and they just hit me, and I fell down, and it just cursed well that ages all my parts, and I broke everything. Oh, in their shackle against the wall, and I had nothing to deal with. Yeah, that, I believe you, buddy. He was literally buried under rubble, so I, I actually do believe him. I yeah, the funny thing is that Seeker is the world's most, like, non-believing person, and I 100% believed him. I'm like, that sounds like something that would happen. <laughs> that sounds it, legit, So yeah. does Florian. <laughs> <laughs> what else does Florian have this week? Uh, that's it. Okay, who else? Who's next? I'll go. Lucius. Alright, I have Lucius' alignment, lawful neutral, trick your place in society, work well for your fellow people, take care of your own, for uh, pushing for, like, Okay, this halfling is in trouble, yeah, but there's also a guy's life on the line that we're trying to help go help, right? So that, that's where that's where I come from with that. Okay. Um, I have his ideal knowledge is paramount for pushing for that knowledge on the uh, the floor symbol in this antechamber that we are now stuck behind. Okay. And uh, Lucius is flaw, double or nothing, <laughs> for a literal double or nothing for two attempts of suggestion. And both of them failing. The first of them worked for a minute or two. I mean, 
you disarm that hobgoblin, so. Who's next? He never got an arm. Hobgoblins are different. Yeah, well, those no, are both it's, it's the same. It's, it's all the same. Ooh, it's fine. Okay, who's next? I'll go. Alex. I have uh, alignment, lawful, neutral, always will be willing to take the law into your hands, but no further for his unwillingness to execute the ogre as he was running away. Okay. I have ideal, the dead deserve dignity, the living deserve to reap what they sow for uh, his opinion that, you know, worst comes to worst, we're going to cut Tom's leg off to get him out of there, right guys? <laughs> Everyone agrees, that's what's happening. Okay. And flaw, I'm sure we can handle this for following Seeker unerringly on his plan to escape from this tiny cursed room. This is the best room. You guys have plenty of water to drink. <laughs> you have like a baseball sized pinpoint of sunlight overhead, so you can grow crops. <laughs> yep. Yep, we live here now. And what does Gus have for me? Uh neutral good. I must be a benefactor and stride to leave the world in a better place than I found it for my uh care of tom okay and ideal my companions are my support structure and i must protect them from myself for hitting that hobgoblin with a hammer for shooting my very good friend lucius with a longbow he's not a he's not a hobgoblin he's a bug bear. i'm saying it on purpose now to, to mess with you i want you to know that Rosie would be very upset at you <laughs> and that's all i have Oh, in the video. In the video, okay. Uh, we, what was the most creative solution to a problem this session? The was that the familiar sh sh shenanigans? Sh yeah, chicanery. Sp like my mine was of course like the tricking the ogre and somebody else said uh, and then somebody else said summoning the familiar down in the room with Tom. So we're awarding with it Tom. to seeker. Yeah. Yes. Yep. For all yeah. the stuff with his familiar. Who? Further the party's goals the most. Uh, Give that to Alexander for making Scrappy set off the trap. <laughs> like it's, I'm a big fan of that one. Who is the most time. badass? Give it to Gus for saying no to all of Brick's attack rolls. Well, just one. <laughs> I got hit once. That was a whole round of attacks. You, you said no to seven of them. That's pretty good. It's not bad. Yeah. And we award one for intangibles. For, or that goes to Lucius for trying to de-escalate and, in fact, re-escalating. <laughs> and let me check the straw poll here. That ogre is actually a devout follower of a minor sect of Windyism, which involves taking your, things to your fear and throwing them down high objects. And <laughs> Seeker has the straw poll this week. Uh, we're level three, right? So blips are worth 60? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Spent two. Oh crap! Did I put the? What's everybody's experience levels? Because I don't remember if I put the three forty on my experience already. Uh, I am at uh thirteen or fifteen fifty five. All right, so Alexander, okay. I've got five blips. This week. I did not. Florian yep. has two. Yep. Gus. Uh huh. Six. Lucius has five. And Seeker has six. How, how, how much are they worth? Sixty? Sixty apiece. And I'm topped off on blips for next week. Uh, I need... Uh, I know. That's, that's how close are we to level four now? No I'm about 50%. Why, why? Okay. Yeah. Oh, so nobody's going to roll up into my into the melee next week with uh with fireball good to know i'm gonna go ahead and save this map because i think we're gonna need this we have such a hard time remembering what trouble we got up to every week my hope is that by the end of the next week no one will remember this is my fault <laughs> <laughs> making a uh, note to myself now <laughs> Not Seeker's <laughs> fault. Listen, <laughs> Seeker's fault. Gus agrees with go. you that this was the correct choice. All right. And that's but, how you know it's your fault. That's oh. it for this week, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, I'll be back um, some evenings throughout the week to probably play some more randos and things. And we'll be back next Sunday for the thrilling conclusion of this campaign from the looks of it. <laughs>